many times have I heard questions like, why, why can't the promises work for me? I see what they are. I can read in the Bible about getting things from God, but somehow it just doesn't register. And it occurs to me that in any given doctrine or teaching in the Scriptures, if we don't have the full understanding, then it's not going to work. Yes. Do we understand that? Yeah. See, someone might hand you a, a, a set of car keys and say, okay, there's, there's, there's a car right over, but you've never even seen a car. But they say, okay, now take this, take these keys out and put them in the, put them in the, de and turn it and drive down the street. Well, they don't even know which one of the doors that you open. They don't know how to get the ignition to work. You see, they got to have the full knowledge, don't they? How much more true is it that we've got to have the full counsel of God? Amen. Now, I want to take you to a scripture in. Uh, Mark chapter 4. Go there with me. Fourth chapter Mark. I was going to get a kick out of this passage. I'm going to begin reading with, uh, let's see, verse 35. On the same day when evening had come, he, let's talk about Jesus, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Now, that's probably a matter of great concern, would you imagine? Yeah. If you're out in the middle of this lake, they call it a sea, but it's hardly a sea, but the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee, and the boat's filling up with water, one would say to oneself, this is not good. Right? Right. Verse 38, but he, Jesus, was in the stern, he's back in the back, asleep on a pillow. Okay, now we've got a problem here. The boat's filling up, and the boss is asleep. What do we do? They awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I'm serious. Then he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Yes. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's ask this question. Why should they have not been afraid when all this started happening? Was it just because Jesus was in the boat? What, what, why is he saying to them, why didn't you have faith? Now look back in verse 35. In verse 35, Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side. <clears throat> Who said that? Jesus. Jesus, God. Let us cross over to the other side. Here's what I want to get across today. Is that when God speaks... It's a done deal. Yes. Amen. When God speaks, it's a done deal. Kingdom principle number one. Oh, I hope you make notes. Kingdom principle number one. 
the Lord releases a powerful prophetic declaration in the form of a promise. Is that a promise that we're going to go to the other side? Yes. Because he said. He wouldn't be saying that. I mean, he knew no sin, right? So he's not going to say that if it's not true. So here's the kingdom principle. The kingdom principle is there is such a thing as a prophetic declaration. Prophetic means it's going to happen. You, you can't see anything right now. Here we are. We're in the boat. We're out in the middle of the sea. we got a problem. The boat's filling up. The winds and waves are really crashing against us. So what are we going to do? We're going to think back to what he said before we left land. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. We start looking in the times of the storm, we start looking for the words that God has spoken. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Because now we got something to stand on. Yes, come on. I want to talk about prophetic declarations a minute. <clears throat> When, when you promise something, okay, now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promise my wife that she gets a vacation in Maui next year. All right. I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> Ooh, yes. I receive it. <laughs> Sometimes these illustrations get you in trouble, you know. <laughs> What, what thing? I really meant to say El Reno. We're going to go to Best Western Hotel and spend the weekend at El Reno. <laughs> and eat at, the, eat at Charlie's Diner. A prophetic declaration is a promise. A promise means I'm going to do something. Now, when God says something... It's in the form of always right now. I mean, you remember when he was talking to Moses and he, Moses asked him the question, well, who, who will I tell them told, that told me to go back to Egypt and get Israel out of bondage? And he said, tell them I am. Yes. Always in the present. He thinks in the present. Even if it happened yesterday or it's going to happen 16 trillion years from now, it's always right now in the present. I want you to understand that. So when he says something, in his mind, it is accomplished. Yeah. Yes. Right? So he was saying, we're going to go to the other side. In the, in the mind of Christ, when he says that, he can already see them hitting the shore and everybody getting out of the boat and going to the Dairy Queen for a, you know, a float. Right? A prophetic declaration is an established fact that God has created. Everybody got it. Now I want to take it one step further. Isaiah 55, 11, read it with me. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Now, he doesn't make any bones about it when he says it. By golly, it's going to happen. Yes. He's God. Amen. 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 Now, kingdom principle number two. God's promise, here's where people get messed up. God's promise remains suspended, or in other words, it's still invisible because it's in the realm of the Spirit until it manifests. Have we got that? Yeah. See, when, he's, when he said, we're going to go to the other side, it's like that word went out and now it's, it's crystallized in the spirit realm. But you can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't touch it. It hadn't manifested. We're looking for the manifestations, aren't we? Yeah. See? So when it's there... It's already done in the eyes of God and in His mind. Yes. Yes. But it has not been manifested to you yet. Yes. All right. Now, how do we know this? Let's look here. 2 Corinthians 4.18, read it with me. 
while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we've got things that we can see. We've got things that we can't see. I feel like a camel been out in the desert 16 weeks. Can't get enough water in me. All right, now the word's gone forth. It is real, but you haven't seen it yet. It isn't hope it works. It has already established. It is already done. Yes. Got it? Yep. Principle number three. Someone on earth has got to hear it and receive it as God's truth for them. It's like a it's like a, a radio station. They're putting out the music, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But if nobody turns on the station, it does nothing. So you and I, by faith, we have to realize when Jesus said you're going to the other side, you are going to the other side. Yes. But remember, we don't walk by, by sight, we walk by faith. Yes. Hallelujah. So this little passage here, this, this little promise here comes from this place, and you ought to know this one by heart. Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Why were they afraid in that boat that night? They didn't believe the water. They heard him say it. Then faith comes by hearing, right? And hear by the word. See, if, we're, if we were Greek scholars, when we go to that term word, that word is not the Greek word logos, which means the written word or the established canon of Scripture. It is the word rhema, which means that which has become enlivened by the Spirit of God within me that moves me to receive whatever it was that God said. See the difference between Logos and Rhema? You have to have the Logos because that's what we, that's what we depend on. But if when we're working with the Logos and we see those powerful truths and the kingdom principles and the Holy Spirit begins to work with us, how many of you remember in John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's going to be given to you because He's going to be your teacher. He's going to lead you into all the truth. Yeah, right. And when you know the truth, what happens? Set you free. Set you free. Those men should have been set free from fear before fear even arose. See, what you and I have got to do is we look at that, that group of men and we say, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to make the same mistake and do the same thing they did. When I'm amidst the storm, this all came about, by the way, when I was sitting there listening to Fox News and they were showing about all the chaos and destruction and even death now, murder. It's a storm, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And your first thought is, well, man, I guess our, guess our nation's going to hell in a handbasket, as they say. Yeah. My next thought is, no, wait a minute, no, no, wait a minute. We've got a whole bunch of believers. That's right. Children of the Most High God in this nation. Yes, we are. Believe God. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot more of us than you might think. Mm -hmm. And God is not finished with the good old USA yet. That's right. That's right. And that's when I began to receive that unction by the Holy Ghost to take those scriptures that you are always led in triumph in Christ, for example. Amen. And it began to well up in me and it, it, it changes from Logos to Rhema. 
and I began to speak over our nation just like I did today. Yes. Those are not empty words. I'm telling you what, there's something inside of you that ought to rise up by the Holy Ghost. And I mean, you begin to speak it. You know when you are speaking it, it is His words, not yours. Yes. And when His words go forth, we just read it from Isaiah 55, 11. When His words go forth, it does not return to Him void, but it does the very thing that He sent it to do. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. This is good preaching for a bald-headed guy. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Principle number four. God's blessing manifests. Say the word manifest. Yes. God's blessing manifests in the natural realm once the biblical requirement is obeyed by the child of God. All right, now, most of us will go to 2 Corinthians 1.20. And we love that, and I do too. I love that verse. It says, the promises of God are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. Yes and amen, the promises of God. The problem is, is that most people focus only on the promise and they don't focus on the condition to the promise. Right? And maybe you saw a little ditty that I put on the Facebook the other day about this very thing. Man, I got many, many responsive people go, man, I need to remember that. For example, if we go to Matthew 6.33, but seek first the kingdom of, his, of, of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And we focus on the, all these things will be added to you. We forget that we've got to seek first His kingdom. Yeah. Well, what about Psalms 37.4? Oh, I like that one. Delight yourself also in the Lord and He will do what? Give you the desires of your heart. Oh, I've got a lot of desires in my heart to see done. I just really like that promise. But what does He say? Do you know delighting in the Lord means that He is numero uno to you? Yes, His ways. Everything about Him is what you're all about. You're willing to submit anything that you have in the way of your thinking, your beliefs, your attitudes in favor of His. And anything that you see in His character that you don't have, you're working to try to get it to conform to the way He thinks and acts. Yeah. That's delighting in the Lord. Yeah. I've used this example before. I'll use it again. We used to have a little minister schnauzer named Nikki, a little silver schnauzer. And one day I was sitting in my favorite recliner and Nikki had her toys and she was just kind of playing around the base of my chair. I wasn't even, I had nothing to do with her. I was not talking about her, not talking to her, not playing with her, nothing. But she just wanted to be right there. That's what the Holy Spirit said to me. That's what it's like when you delight yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah, yes. You want to be close. You want to feel that connection. You want to sense the bond that's there with you and Father God. You just love to be a part of what He's doing. See, I, I want to be where people that love God are. Don't you? Yes. I want to be in the atmosphere of faith. I want to be where there's worshipers in spirit and in truth. That's delighting in the Lord. I'll tell you one thing that happens. When you delight in the Lord, you know, He tells you He's going to give you the desires of your heart. When you're delighting in Him, those desires that you have, they're going to be perfectly aligned with His. You're not going to be wanting some whatever. Whatever He's wanting for you, He has made you conform to that. Are you with me? And believe me, whatever He wants for you is going to be far better than what you want for you. Oh, that's good. That's right. That's good. I want to, I want to try this thing on with uh, 1 Peter 2.24 for a minute. 
Can I do that? Pull up First Peter 2.24. I want to go a little different direction here. Read that with me. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. All right, where is where is the prophetic declaration in that verse? What's where's the promise? Remember, a prophetic declaration is a promise. Where's the promise? Yeah. See, he's talking about what happened. He bore our sins. He died for our sins. But now he is, that is going to, in effect, a promise for you. There is a prophetic declaration that went out from Calvary. Remember, it's suspended there. Right. Who's it for? Me. Anyone who believes, yes. So when that declaration is heard, now you're sick in your body, let's say, or something wrong. Now you've already made Jesus the Lord of your life. Why aren't you why aren't you healed? If it were healed, why aren't you? Listen to me. Just for a moment, put away what you've been taught on this verse. Just put it away for just a minute. Let me just play with you. If that happened, as some of us have been taught, we would instantly be healed when we are born of the Spirit. But the thing is, we are born of the Spirit, not born of the flesh again. So that hangs there, that promise hangs there, and now you look at it and you say, that's mine. And that's when that becomes real to you. Do you understand? Because that word is sure. He says the word that I speak, when it goes forth out of my mouth, it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. So this is what I've seen so many discouraged people who have just thrown the whole faith message out the window because they can't see it work like it's been taught. Are you tracking with me yet? And the way it's been taught, I think, needs some tweaking. Are you with me? Yes. It needs a little bit of tweaking. If you were healed, in God's mind, it's over. That's right. That's it. Right. But in your body, it's not. That's right. Until you reach into that realm of the Spirit where that Word is waiting for someone to get a hold of it. So all you got in faith is simply taking God at His Word. Isn't it? Yes. Let's not make it hard. Faith is taking God at His Word. When God says you are righteous, you get up in the morning and you look in the, in the mirror and man, you don't feel very holy. You sure don't look very holy. You don't look righteous at all. You still got some flaws. Well, it's quiet in here, isn't it? But none of those things count because something has already been declared. Yes, yes that's right. That's and it's waiting. That word of righteousness is waiting for someone to receive it. Yes. Are you with me? How do you do it? You believe that Jesus was the Son of God. You believe that He was born of the Spirit, that He would He died and rose from the grave. That's right. And in that, you become righteous. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you look. God says you're righteous. Yes. I want you to understand clearly this thing of prophetic declarations. It's going to help you. It's going to keep you from being discouraged. And I promise you there are going to be people that will not understand how faith works. And you can be the one to deliver them from the deceptions or the misunderstandings that maybe they've come up with. So you're, you're the key. You're the key speaking the truth in love. Oh, let it be done. Let it be done. Let me ask you a question. Just, this is a deep one. 
Why is faith even necessary for us? Why, why does it say the just shall live by faith? What, what's the story? Why is this? Think about this a moment. You remember when Jesus is standing before the governor right before they're going to crucify him? And he talks about his kingdom. Remember? And he says this. He says, my kingdom's not of this world. You know what he said? In fact, to his disciples at a different time, he said, the kingdom's inside you. That's right. Okay, it's a spiritual kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And a spiritual kingdom has a different set of laws and principles that govern it. And the only way you can get those things in the spiritual kingdom to operate is by faith. That's it. That's why we have to have it. Yes. Well, I heard, I've heard a thousand times, you know, pretty sure I don't know, I, I guess I just don't have faith. I said, don't call God a liar. That's right. I'd never call God a liar. I said, you just did. What do you mean? Well, you just said that you don't have faith. My Bible tells me in Romans 12 that he's given a measure of it to every one of us. That's Are you with me yet? Yes. You couldn't even be born of the Spirit without faith. Right. Sure. Think about this a moment. You, you're sitting in a revival service or outside somewhere where some preacher's preaching the gospel and you don't, you don't even know Jesus. And you're hearing this. And all of a sudden, something starts working in you. You can't even see anything. I mean, he's talking about a God you can't even see. Right. And he's talking about promises that are so absurd and ridiculous that it they're impossible to believe. Who ever heard of someone walking on the water? My goodness sakes. Or being raised from the dead for that healing people that are blind? Uh -huh. Every bit of it takes faith. Yeah. That's why you and I, we have to use that faith muscle. Yes. Development. Faith is like a muscle. Yes. You don't use that muscle very much, and what happens to it? It shrivels up. Listen to me carefully, folks. I believe we have come into a season of time when the true church is going to have to emerge. Yes. The true church. Yes. I'm not talking about what's on the sign outside of the building. Yeah. I'm not talking about what denomination we're part of or not. The true church is the called out ones, the saints who have been set apart as holy. I don't care what label they have. If they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, they believe that He died and rose from the dead, then they have been saved. Do you know that? Yes. Now they, by qualification, are part of the church. But the real church must emerge as the powerhouse that it's supposed to be. Yes. Yes. See, something happened in the first century that I don't see happening here. In the first century, I mean... The church was so dynamic that people by the thousands were coming into it because they were looking and seeing. Number one, they're seeing a level of love between believers that they had never seen before. You're going to know you're my disciples by how. The love that you have for one another. There was a demonstration of love that I'm looking for in the body of Christ now. But there was also a selflessness, wasn't there? What well, says that when anybody had a need, anybody that had something gave it to them. I'm not talking about like in the Chaz zone that you're seeing in Seattle. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the real church operating in a selfless way. Yes. But most importantly, I'm talking about a body of Christ that understands their authority in the name of Christ Jesus. And they can stand up and they'll deal with the forces of darkness in high places. That's why you Thursday night intercessors are very key, not just to this church, but to Covenant Global as a whole. 
We have hundreds of churches all over the world that are depending upon you. We have a nation that's depending on you. Yes. 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 Not just intercessors, but all of us. That's right. But I believe some of us have a different anointing than others. How many of you understand that concept? And those that are being called to intercession, I'm telling you what, I believe you have a combined voice that can really move mountains. And I say, let it be done. Amen. Hallelujah. I sense the Holy Spirit saying this. That the ways of God, the principles and methods of the kingdom must be fine-tuned. They must be fine-tuned in you. This is so, so that you cannot just survive yourself, but that you can thrive. You can thrive in times of famine. You can rise up strong when others are weak because you understand truth and have you received it in your heart and you have received it in your mind and it will elevate you above the, the waves of unbelief and fear and doubt that work against the people around you. For the Lord is saying that I'm lifting up my church I'm raising you above the fray so that you can be that deciding factor. Have ears to hear the Lord is saying. Move into that place of power. Move into that place where the Spirit of the Lord can move in you and through you on my behalf. For the Lord says that there will be peril before you, but it need not come near your dwelling. There'll be danger all around you, but you should have no fear. For has my word not gone out, he says, has my word not gone forth? Have I not declared to you that I am your refuge and fortress? Yes. Oh, the Lord says, I will care for my people, but you must be strong and without fear and no doubt. And as surely as you are, I will show you the fullness of my salvation, says the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. Let me wait on the Lord. No, yes, Sibyl Bhakti. Someone pray in the spirit with me. Lekoni Tasa. Lead Lomo Kata. Saramushimoli Kata Tata. She's from the name Bukatu. Yes, the Lord has reminded me of something that He showed me just the other day. I was back here and I was walking through, praying over all of you. You weren't here, but I was praying over all of you here. And, um, I was shown that there are some that uh, have been waiting and waiting and waiting on certain things that you feel like the Lord has told you He's going to do for you or give to you, and yet there's been great delay. And the thing that He told me is, that his timing is perfect. Yes. 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 Amen. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> there have been many times in my life I felt like that that wasn't true. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, because I needed something right now, and it came only back up, way back there or up there.
But when I would look at it in retrospect, yes. I could see when it was perfect. Yes. Don't be moved from your faith, yes. your stance of faith, yes. because something is yet to be manifested. Yes. When the word has gone out and he's made a promise to you individually, yes. it's as sure as any as the chair you're sitting on. Amen. It is suspended until the time when you receive it and it's right for him. Yes. And those will be at that perfect time. And if there's a delay, don't be moved. Amen. Don't complain. Don't argue with him or moan and groan. Well, that's our tendency, isn't it? Oh, but Lord, I sure wish you'd get on with it. But God is saying, I am sure I'm going to do it for you. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Now, the Lord's His word's gone out to you today. Yes. The question is, what you going to do with it? What you going to do with it? You're going to stand and not be moved no matter what you see or feel. Amen. You're going to keep speaking faith no matter what anything says or anyone says or looks at you, how they do or what they do. Don't compare yourself to someone else. I mean to tell you people, we're in a very tenuous time for those who don't have faith. We're in a very dynamic time for us who do have it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. I'll just let me explain something here just to use as an example. Ever since this COVID thing started happening, do you remember in the book of Genesis it talks about a man by the name of Isaac? And it, it gives a an interesting statement about it. It says that Isaac prospered in the season of famine, in the year of drought. Yes. 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 He sowed and reaped during drought? Yes. yes. Any farmer, oh, you don't got to be a farmer. If this ground is harder than a rock, putting seed in it makes no sense, does it? No. But yet he did because God told him to. And he prospered during that season. My family has seen during this time when everything else looked like it was falling apart, all of a sudden God began to open the windows of heaven to us and a lot of things we had been waiting on forever. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> like the old boy said, God am good. Yes. Very good. So I can, we're living proof that God is doing good things. Yes. Yes. So stand strong. Don't be moved by what you see or feel. Amen. Glory to God. Someone needs to speak here. Someone needs to tell me what's on your heart. I mean, God's telling you somebody. Is it you? Who is it? Me. I just want to share with the church some things that uh, have been going on with the intercessors in particular, and probably this is going to apply to you as well. And this has been burning in my heart ever since we came into the to our sanctuary today. Um, a couple of weeks ago, when we came in here, we were all stationed in different places out here, praying and so forth. I got to tell you that in the flesh, it was like, I, I just don't know if I've got it tonight or not. I don't know if I want to come up. I'm tired. And, and the list goes on and on. And all of a sudden, after we had finished praying, Sister Ann back there, she said, is there anybody in our group that feels as though they're just absolutely exhausted. You are just absolutely fatigued out. Your mind is not clear. You feel like you're being assaulted all, all the time. The enemy is just coming at you right and left and every which way. And the list goes on and on. And I'm just sitting there 
in my seat and I'm saying, yes, <laughs> that would be me. And I thought I was the only one, but evidently, and the next thing you know, everyone in the group began to share some of these things. Several years ago, PK and I went through seasons like this as intercessors, and we remember something about the spirit of Leviathan. Leviathan is a representation of an alligator, maybe a big fat one. And I've seen, I saw several on TV occasionally that look like this. He's huge. But if he gets a hold of somebody like this one over here or me or something, man, he latches on tight. And the next thing you know, he's twisting and he's turning and he's tearing to shreds and devouring everything in big gulps. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Because in the spirit, that is kind of something that has been going on. And it's not only individuals, it is churches. It's not only churches, it is the nation. And the enemy is doing his very best to divide and to conquer. That is the strategy out there. So another version of Leviathan, it's like a python snake. Have you ever seen one of those babies? I've seen some of these shows where these guys get out there trying to get one of them in the swamp and stuff, and they'll stretch from me to hand back there. I mean, they're monstrous snakes. And the way they work is gradually they get a hold of their prey and they easy creep up on them, wrap them up and begin the squeeze. And when they do, they cannot breathe. They cannot get any air in. And they literally suffocate and are crushed. And it swallows the prey. Does that sound familiar? We're living in a time, I think, where we as Christians and churches and things like that are literally going through a crushing type situation. And the strength of life that we have in us sometimes is just completely squeezed out of us at times. Now, I'm sharing this with you to tell you we're not defeated. That's right. We're not ignorant of His devices. Yes, that's right. And it may be symbolic. But it is also real that we feel these symptoms and things. So if that is something going on in you, rejoice, because today your deliverance is at hand. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It is here. It is now. If you're feeling that way and the enemy has been trying to defeat us or drag us down or drag this church down or anything else, we speak to that mountain and we say it's going to be removed in Jesus' name. We will triumph and we will be victorious because we know who we believe in, yeah. and He's able to do all that we can ask or think and Amen. then some. Amen. So, Spirit of Leviathan, you you pray if that is you, if this has got your name on it, if it doesn't now, it may have in, in days to come. If you start feeling all these symptomatic things like that, just rebuke the devourer and flee from Him. Yes. And He'll flee from you. Amen. Amen. You do have the authority over the evil one. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound, bound in heaven. Just kidding. Kay and I, uh, Kay gave me this uh, recommendation of this book to read, and I've been reading it back and forth. I seem to get distracted from it, and then I go back to it. And the other day, it's a, it's a book about a guy's testimony of a visitation from heaven, I think is the name. And it was a, it's about his visit to heaven. Phil's already read it. He's become an avid reader for someone that said he couldn't read at age 35. He's become an av avid reader. And anyway, something I read the other day just hit me. He's describing what he saw in heaven of what prayers look like in the spirit realm. Do you remember that part, Kay? And he said, God showed me my prayers in faith when we pray the Word of God are like shock waves that go out into the spirit realm. And I, it just stuck with me ever since I read it. And I noticed, uh, and I quote Matthew 18, 18 all the time because I forbid things and I condemn them and I release things on my way to work especially. And I've noticed ever since I read that and kind of took that 
thought process on that my words send shockwaves through the spirit realm. Uh, my prayer life has changed. This morning I prayed with the praise team and it's just my prayer life on the way to work just has become very strong and bold and it's almost like all I have to do is step out of the way and God just prays through me. And exactly what I, I need to allow him to do that and stop praying in my mind because he knows what to pray. The word is in me. Yes. He'll bring it out and he'll speak it forth through my voice. Yes. But if you don't speak it in faith, nothing will happen. You know, it's like prophecy. If you're not obeying God and you don't prophesy when he tells you to, if you don't speak, speak it, it won't come to pass. You have to stand up and say it. And I've noticed a considerable difference in my prayer life since I read that passage. And I just imagine when my words are going out there, I don't see anything different. I don't feel anything different. But in the spirit realm, shockwaves are going out all over. Like let, let, me, let me read a passage thinking because of that. Paul's writer, this comes from uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, let me read from verse 8. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. I want you to notice that it was, it was hidden. You couldn't see it. It was there, but you couldn't see it. Listen. To the intent that now, now, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Yes. By the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. We're talking about the big dogs now. So the manifold wisdom of manifolds, like a many faceted, the many faceted wisdom of God is going to be made known to those principalities and powers yes. that rule in the heavenlies. Let me tell you what, when you get control over the heavenly realm that has assignment over you, you're going to see the manifest will and plan of God in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless that yes. man that's a water man. The manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose. This is the perp one of the purposes of the church. The church is not a building we come to for two hours a week and we feel good and... We have a purpose. Make known the wisdom of God, which He has accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. Whew. I'm going to drop down and just listen to this one. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, say that word with me, power, according to the power that works in us. Yes. Amen. Or works through us or for us. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, we're going to have to change the way we yes. think. Yes. 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 We've kind of had a victim mindset mm -hmm. as, as it relates to the devil. Or so. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. Let me tell you what, he can't take on any one of you. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. He can't do anything to you that you don't allow him to do. Yeah, right. That's right. Well, Amen. I vote for I don't want him to do anything to you. Yes. Amen. Yes. So let's make known to him the wisdom of God. What is that? That there is no weapon that's going to form against you is going to prosper. Yeah, that's right. That you're always going to be led in, in triumph in Christ. Yeah, right. That you're more than a conqueror. Right. How many different things do we have to hear before we finally say, you know, I must be one tough little cookie. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, stand up on your feet. I think we've done what we needed to do. Thank you, my Jesus. Oh, I bless you, Lord. God bless. Thank you for truth. Oh, my. 
I'm just so glad, Lord, we don't have to go looking for it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. Some of these fundamentals, these basics today. Teach us how to operate in the kingdom successfully. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead us. We choose to submit to you. We choose to submit humbly to your leadership and guidance that we might fully accomplish the will of God in our lives. Oh, glory to God. I just I feel like we're incomplete yet. I, I can't turn us loose. What is it, Lord? What, what do you need us to do here? If you have a word for this group, I want you to speak out. One other thing I wanted to mention is that God watches over His Word to confirm it. And uh, on the internet, there were multiple letters and many things that were said by intercessors of the church, universal, all over the place. And what was being said was the same thing that, that I had mentioned to you about Leviathan and about the assaults that were coming against people, how they were feeling in the natural as well as the spiritual. Let me just ask in here, are there any of you that are feeling those things at this point in time? Have, is there any of that that's really ringing your bell? We're set free, yeah. and you know that. But we're set free because the Lord is specifically n nailing this down. So we just in invite the Lord to continue to advise us. Now, you know, when I pray, I don't always pray in my understanding because a lot of times I don't know what's going on. Right. But I will pray in the Spirit, and I know something is happening out there that's getting done, and it's it's a power working within me that I cannot even define or begin to, to know fully. But I know one thing, there is strength and there's power in what's going on there. Amen. I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to do a little spiritual warfare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amen. Now, it's in the powerful name of Jesus that we stand against the forces of evil. Yeah, that's right. Any demonic power that would try to rise up against anyone under this shelter, anyone in this church family, we bind you in the name of Jesus, forbidding you to operate against us. You will not steal from us. You will not destroy. You will not kill. For we declare the Word of God is alive and real, yes. and it shields us. God Himself has said, I will be your shield. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Any spirit, any spirit that is not of God will not touch you. Yes. I stand against it in the authority of the name of Jesus. Yes. We loose the angels of God to do battle on our behalf. Yeah. 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 
And the warring angels to create the will of God in the realm of the spirit that we might enjoy freedom in the natural realm as well. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Give a shout, people. Give a shout. Hallelujah. Gloria Masataya. Gloria Masokoya, they say. Oh, you're my God. No weapon that forms against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, we condemn it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. The Word of God has gone forth here. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. that yeah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, victory is ours. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. We're no longer the victims, we're the victors. Shoma Makasa. Amen, amen. I, I recommend that you do go home today and do exactly what you've heard the pastor do here over the church in your home. You are the primary one in authority in your realm. That's right. Go deal with any spirit of darkness. That's right. Yes. Yes. Particularly a spirit of fear. Yes. Because if you're watching the news, I mean, you're wondering when these forces of evil are going to come to your front door. Well, I'm telling you what, they can't touch you. Amen. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 But it's important, just like Kathy said a moment ago, it's important for you to speak it out. Amen. So I think it's interesting that Jesus said even the devils believe. Yeah. That's right. But I'll tell you what, when you take it the next step, see, Paul said, we believe, therefore we speak. Amen. That true believing moves you to release the power that's in you by the Holy Spirit. Now, I speak blessings over you in Jesus' name that as you go forth from here, you go forth riding on that wave of strength and power in the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. I decree this over you, that you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. Now let's go in the power of that truth. Amen? Amen. You're dismissed.